Okay, so in this video, we will use the comparison test to determine whether the series converges or diverges as we have a series of positive terms. Before we do so, let's expand out the first few terms of our infinite series to get a feeling for what kind of terms we're summing. So 1 over when n is 2, as the sum begins at 2, will give us 1 over 2 to the 4, ln of 2, plus when n is 3, 1 over 3 to the 4, ln of 3, plus when n is 4, 1 over 4 to the 4, ln of 4, plus, and so on. So when n is larger than 2, n to the 4 is clearly positive, ln of n is clearly positive, so we are summing positive terms, which is why we can at least attempt to use the comparison test. Well, this is our original sequence, the terms we are trying to sum over, and as we can see, when n approaches infinity, as n is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, we have 1 over n to the 4 ln of n. Now this goes to infinity, so 1 over it shrinks to 0. So we are adding smaller and smaller and smaller positive terms. What is the principal reason why the terms are small? Well, ln of x is large when n is large, but n to the 4 is much larger than ln of n, as we have a power function which is much greater than a logarithmic function when n becomes bigger. And so here the intuition is that we should keep the 1 over n to the 4 and drop the ln of n. And this looks good because then, if we only sum 1 over n to the 4, this will be a p-series with p equals 4, which would imply, as 4 is larger than 1, that we have convergence. So we should expect this series to converge. Let's look at the graph of ln of n just for a second. y equals ln of x. We know that ln of 1 is 0, and when is ln equal to 1? We know that ln of e equals 1, and e is approximately 2.7, so it means that beyond 3, ln becomes larger than 1. So this is how we're going to start the argument. So as long as n is above 3, then ln of x is larger than 1, and so ln of n for any integer that is 3 or greater will be giving us a value larger than 1. And so if n is above 3 or equal to 3, ln of n is at least 1. Well, we can now multiply across by n to the 4, as n to the 4 is clearly positive, this will preserve the direction of our inequality. So n to the 4, ln of n, is at least n to the 4 times 1, which is n to the 4, which is strictly positive when n is at least 3. Well, let's now invert both expressions. If we invert both sides, of course, we reverse the inequality. And so 1 over n to the 4, ln of n, will be smaller than 1 over n to the 4. And now, we have just compared the original sequence with a much simpler sequence, which is now our bn. And the key point is, as we sum over these terms, we will have a convergent p-series. And now we're essentially done. So, keep in mind though that this inequality is only valid when n is 3 or larger, which means that if we sum the smaller terms from 3 to infinity, this will be, of course, smaller than summing the larger terms from 3 to infinity. But we know what bn is. It's 1 over n to the 4. And as we've just said, this is a simple p-series where p equals 4. The key point is, 4 is strictly larger than 1, so this p-series converges.
<coughs> sorry, as this P series converges, it therefore returns a real number, so it is less than infinity. But this means that the original series from 3 to infinity is finite, as it is strictly less than infinity. But when we have a series of positive terms that is finite, it therefore converges. And we can rewrite a n explicitly as 1 over n to the 4 ln of n. So this series converges by the comparison test. And we're done. Or are we? What did we want to show, or at least determine, whether the series of 1 over n to the 4 ln of n from 2 to infinity converges or diverges. But now we have proved that the series of 1 over n to the 4 ln of n, not from 2, but from 3 to infinity, converges. Is that a problem? Well, no, we're only missing the first term, which is 1 over 2 to the 4 ln of 2. So if the remaining series converges, this is just a real number, well, we can clearly add to it the first term. And if we add the first term to this real number, the result, of course, is a real number as this series converges. And so we can begin summing at 2, and that's not a problem. As again, we're simply adding a real number to this given real number. And that's it. So the whole point is to remember that it's okay if inequalities that you derive are not valid when the series begins. As long as they're valid at some point and they yield the desired result, we know that when we deal with convergence, when we're not trying to evaluate the series but only figure out whether we have convergence or divergence, we can always ignore the first few terms of the series and it will not affect convergence. So here our inequalities could have been valid when n begins at 500 and we would have still reached the same conclusion. If we ignore the first few terms of a series, this never affects convergence. So because the series from 3 to infinity converges, the series from 2 to infinity also converges, and that's it.